Okay, let us uh, continue our study of the theory of paths. I have been saying that the isomorphism theorem is the most important theorem. Um, it is an ingredient into the other uh, theorems that we will prove and it is also the technical, technically the most demanding theorem. Okay. And I said that we would maybe every day write the isomorphism theorem once. But I will not do it at the beginning, maybe we will do it later. In, later. Um, uh, so, uh, let me remind you that we were uh, proving the while group action on uh, on um, B pi, where for pi in P plus. So, recall P plus is the set of paths that lie completely in the dominant weight chamber and end at an integral weight. And B pi is the colored directed graph generated by pi by means of the root operators. Okay. So, there is a while group action on b, b pi and um, so, I want to give the proof today. It is a bit of, um, uh, so let me say at the outset that uh, it took me a while to understand the proof and uh, in fact, I you know in the paper there are, a f he writes a few things. Um, the last step is a bit technical. And uh, uh, I'll tell you my interpretation of what what he writes means. Okay, maybe there is a simpler way to see this or whatever. A anyway, so the last step of the proof is going to be technical. I'll try to make it as I'll try to break it up into homework steps for you. Okay, but even if uh, the proof is some of it is not understandable, certain things should be all right. Like for example what is the action and what do we expect of it. The most important thing or one of the most one of the important things about this action is there is this map, right. This is the weight lattice and what is the map if I take a path eta here and there is you can send it to its end point. So, that gives you an integral weight. We started with an integral path ending at an integral weight and you get this by applying various f alphas. So, each time I apply an f alpha I decrease the weight the end point by an alpha. So, the difference of the original end point and my that is of pi and of eta is is an element of the root lattice. So, it is it's a integral weight in particular. So, right. So, eta 1 is therefore an integral. Okay. And there is a natural w action here. So, so this is w equivalent. This is what we want. This is a w map. So, there is an action here. Okay. And how does it act? So, let us just write s alpha. s alpha where alpha is a simple root acting on a weight here which I call mu is we know this, uh, this is mu mu alpha check alpha, right. That is the formula that we know. Right. So, what we want here, whatever action I do, this must be equivariant, okay. okay. So, that should tell you what, so you do the stupid thing, okay. So, what you do is look at, so, um, so here is, so this motivates the following. Okay, let us do also one thing. Suppose mu alpha check is uh, m, right, is m, let us say 5. Then what is S alpha mu? It is 5 alpha less than mu. Okay. So, here is what I do. I take my instead of to understand what it does to eta, I just look at it and see what I see what it does to eta 1. 
Okay. Suppose eta 1 alpha check is 5. Okay. So, what is S alpha eta 1? It is 5 alpha less than eta 1. Right? Okay. So, this is what I want. This is this I want on the end point. Right? So, let me just uh, what is an operator that decreases alpha? F alpha. So, what I do is I take my eta and apply F alpha 5 times. That is it. So, I do the most stupid thing. Okay? The, the, uh, so, writing that thing out comes out the following. Okay? So, uh, let us call this S alpha tilde that is what he calls it in the paper. Okay. S alpha tilde eta this is the definition. What do I do? I just look at end point. Right? So, uh, eta 1 alpha check. Okay? If it is positive say m then what do I do? I just take f alpha and apply it m times. Observe that if this is true, then f alpha, I can apply f alpha m times. Why? Because if you think of the graph, right? So, the end point, the path is something. So, this is my, you, I hope you understand, this is my time t, this is I am plotting h eta alpha, right, for the path. So, finally, it is m, eta 1 is m. So, it ends up at m this height is m, this, this last thing it does something and goes there, right. So, wh what do I do for f alpha? I take the from the minimum and start looking at f alpha 1 or if I want to apply m, I, I take a light beam of width m, right. And the minimum is 0 or less. So, if this is end going to end, surely I will have a space for a light beam of height m, correct. So, this is definitely going to be non-zero, which I want because this is a group action. So, you cannot kill things, okay. So, it is rather simple to see from the definition that this is non-zero and it has this required property at least. And what do I do if it is negative? Please tell me if this is negative, what should I do? apply E alpha how many times? Minus n times that is all. That's all. Okay, is this clear? Is this, did I write it correctly? Yes. Huh? Okay. Correct and once again this is uh, um, this is also uh, why is this non-zero? If if the so what is e alpha from the minimum i i apply to see that this is non zero i'm trying to see this is non zero right suppose this m was minus 5 okay so 1 2 3 4 5 right so it means my path ends up here right it path ends up here so, it could have gone down, but surely or it may not have, it may just have come here, but it has come here, it ends up here. So, I start with the minimum and take a, so it may, if it, if it has gone down, let us take the case when it has gone down, I start with the minimum, the minimum is at more than 5 below 0, so there is a space enough for a beam of width 5 or height 5 from the left. Okay? Hmm? So, this is non zero. Is this okay? So, this is, is this clear? So, so, what is important, never mind the proof, is the definition, right? And these are non zero and that this is an equivariant thing. Okay? okay. Now, it is just a matter of uh, you know, you hit upon the right thing, you just try and prove it, that is all. Okay?
prove that it is that this is an action so what did we have to do to prove that it is an action you have to you have defined it on the generators right s alpha tilde as alpha varies over simple roots they, they generate this while group w okay by the way i have been calling the while group w whereas both uh, venkatesh and uh, vishwanath have been calling it w tilde or uh, w hat okay you should not be confused for them w is the finite while group w hat is the affine while group now for me there is no finite okay i am in the generalized cuts move symmetrizable you know symmetrizable cuts moody algebra setting so there is only one while group which we call w okay okay so recall that um, so here is a fact um, this w is what is called a cox setter group okay which means it is given by generators and relations the uh, generators are s alphas themselves right and uh, what are the relations each one of them is in is defined as a reflection right and there is also this s alpha s beta so this is alpha simple and there is this m alpha beta is equal to 1 okay where m s alpha beta is equal to so these are the possibilities so it is either uh, um so alpha not equal to beta let's say for alpha equal to beta i have already used it so i hope i get this right 3 if alpha beta check is equal to beta alpha check equals minus 1 <coughs> let me write it like this Uh, two, okay. Let's uh, maybe I should start with two. Two, if alpha beta. Ch so I look at maybe I call this something uh, T alpha beta is equal to alpha beta check. This is definition beta alpha check. So these are the entries of your generalized Cartan matrix. So there is a so the generalized Cartan matrix. If you remember, this is alpha one check, alpha n check. there is alpha 1 alpha n here and so here there is alpha check and beta check and here there is alpha and beta i look at this matrix here these two entries are what we are looking at beta alpha check and alpha beta check okay so it's two if t alpha beta is zero uh 3 if t alpha beta is my 1 so this is always is so one of the things about the cartan matrix is that maybe both are zero okay if one of them is non zero the other is also non zero okay and they are always negative integers so it will always add to a it will multiply to a positive non negative number integer okay so if 4 if t alpha beta is 2 so the only way i can get 2 is if this is minus 1 and this is minus 2 or the other way around 6 if t alpha beta equal to 3 and infinity in all other cases okay so what infinity in all other cases meaning this doesn't exist okay there is no relation okay so now let's see what we have to do we have to show that my s alpha tilde and s beta tilde satisfy this relation whenever it exists right if it doesn't exist then I, there is nothing to do i assuming it exists i must show that that holds okay but look at this claim okay i am not proving this this is just from cartes's book for example okay so if for this relation to exist the the cartan matrix must look like must have one of these four forms which means it's a finite so this is what allows me to reduce it so th this 
so proof of braid relations these are called the braid relations reduces to the case when g is finite dimensional of rank 2 so so for example here it is a1 cross a1 here it is a2 here it is b2 and here it is g2 okay uh, by the way to show this part it's it's rather easy that's a simple thing if i if with this definition you can easily show that s alpha tilde square is is you know you get back eta okay that's rather easy easy exercise which you should do okay so we are so we, we are reduced to this case okay so what do i have to show okay so for the rest of the proof let's assume this case let's assume we are in case just for simplicity the other it's entirely similar if the others if the, the other cases okay so what do i have to show have to show s alpha tilde since i am in case a2 this is 3 is 3 so which means i have to show this okay so what do i what do i mean so i take any eta and i have to show this right okay so this is the question mark so let me write a question mark there which already you know means have to show this so how do i show this there are some reductions that you can make so so instead of here is the first reduction so i look at eta all right so it ends at say some non dominant weight okay so here is my picture for root system eta say ends some somewhere here all right what i can do is this is a non dominant weight chamber this is dominant weight chamber okay instead of doing it for eta what i can do is i can apply see my action the defined action is consistent with the end points so if i am here okay or for simplicity let's say i am here i am here just for suppose eta is here right this is my h beta so if i apply a sol s beta s if i apply if my eta ends here and if i apply s beta tilde to it where will i go i'll go here okay and since these are involutions meaning the square is 1 okay to show this for eta is the same thing as showing it for if i show it for s beta tilde eta the same thing holds then you know it for eta as well okay just for example suppose i know it for s beta s beta tilde eta so the, then what do i mean so if i put s beta tilde eta i know it okay so let's do this so which means this s beta tilde s beta tilde eta right but this cancels and i can multiply by a s alpha tilde here so put s alpha tilde here s alpha tilde here these two cancels now you see i get get this for eta beta alpha beta on eta is alpha beta alpha on eta okay correct so that's a triviality so i can assume okay may assume eta 1 is dominant okay may also assume it is regular okay this is what i 
showed the pictures last time already. So, for example, I am assuming it's now dominant, but if it ends on this wall, then S beta will not act on it. Okay, but what you see, so this will not act on it. So the right hand side becomes alpha beta. Here also I have alpha beta, but then you observe that after I have applied alpha beta, uh, beta doesn't act, meaning it fixes it. After I've acted these two, I am in a, I am a that brings me to the plane H alpha. The end point is on the plane H alpha. So in other words, if I take a point here on the plane H beta and act the reflection by alpha and the reflection by beta, then I end up on a point in H alpha. So this also does not act. So it becomes a triviality. I'm just checking S beta S alpha is equal to S beta S alpha. Okay, this is what I was trying to explain last time and I've said this again. So this is also okay. Okay, so now, so I, can, I may assume, therefore, that the end point is regular dominant, and here is one more one more uh, reduction. Now, suppose my path is pi itself, right? Meaning, if it lies entirely in the dominant field chamber, okay, so. Suppose eta lies entirely in the dominant oil chamber, then, of course, then eta is actually equal to pi, right? That is the only possibility. Right, eta is e equal to pi, because I know that all the E alphas will kill it, and the only thing that is killed by all the E alphas is pi. Okay. But okay, it is pi. But let's argue. so. Um, observe S alpha tilde S beta tilde S alpha tilde pi. And also S beta tilde, S alpha tilde, S beta tilde pi, both end at W naught pi 1. Correct? Both end at W naught pi 1, but there is a unique path ending at W naught pi 1. That is because, that is because you can just think of Lakshmi Vai Shashadri paths now. Okay, this is the reasoning I was trying to give last time, which I mentioned. I'll repeat it. So, so to see that there is a single path ending at W naught pi one, I can just take the Lakshmi Vai Shashadri model. Okay, because I know that they are colored graph isomorphic. If there is a single Lakshmi Vai path ending at W naught pi one. There is a single path in B pi that ends there. Okay. Now, why is there a single path ending at uh, pi 1? Because of the <coughs> orthogonality. Pi 1, there is a single path ending at pi 1, namely the straight line path. Okay. W naught pi 1 is also the same distance from the origin as pi 1 is. Okay. And to get there, you you have a path only of this length. The only way you can get to a place that far from the origin is to go straight there. Okay, that's the argument. So, and at the, therefore, um, and therefore, both are the same. Okay. W naught is the composition of these three operators. Yeah, I'm, you know, if it is not A2 and type G2, you can make the appropriate adjustment. Then you would have to write S alpha, S beta, S alpha. That's the appropriate number of times. Right? Is this okay? Okay. 
Now, finally, so we are now reduced to saying that you have a path. Okay. Okay. Now, using this, what I know. Okay. So choose. So here, here is the now the hard part of the proof. All these are reductions. Now we come to the the crunch time. The, okay. So here is the hard part of the proof. So what you do is, I have assumed. So let me draw this path again. The nature of the path. So this is the dominant white chamber. So my path ends up. Eta 1 is a regular dominant weight. That much I have us, we have reduced to. Okay. So what I will do is, right, I will do, um, I so there is rho, which is a, which is here. So what I will do is, I will take, this is the straight line path to Q rho. So Q, suppose I take the straight line path, I shift everything by the straight line path, right? And if, if this goes, if this becomes non-dominant, depending on how non-dominant this path is getting, I shift it upwards by means of this, right? So by sufficiently shifting, right, if, if I do this for Q bigger than 0, this lies entirely in the dominant chamber. This is a triviality. You know, this I make it large enough and shift so that, so if I shift by a vector in the interior, which is large enough, this path, whatever it is, okay, I'm going to become dominant. That's all. I'm saying something trivial, okay? But then I can apply this principle to this path, right? Both these, these, this, and this evaluate the same on this path. Yes. Any regular weight will do. Any regular weight will do. So we have, by the previous case, we have S alpha tilde S beta tilde S alpha tilde pi Q rho is equal to S alpha Yeah, any, uh, uh, see the same thing, see, uh, e, uh, this was just an illustration. If I had uh, S alpha, S beta, you would write it here and see. Okay, same, same, you know, the same kind of argument. You will, you put S alpha, S beta here and S alpha, S beta here. You understand what I'm saying? You just put, instead of e, eta, just put any string of, and uh, evaluate both sides. and. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, that's, that's rather easy, just by using. This was just an illustration of how it works, okay? Okay, now, so, uh, lies in, in fact, okay, so the claim, so, let me make this lies, if I take it to the M, by, by what I mean by eta to the M is, eta M is, 
notation for eta concatenate with eta m times m times this concatenation is m times this is the definition clearly this is also okay because here I am using the fact that eta you know if it is dominant then I am shifting it by you know further I mean it is obvious okay. So, finally here is the final step so this claim now this is the claim right for m sufficiently large ah one more uh, Okay, let us make one more one more reduction before I come here. Okay. So, uh, uh, last time also I mentioned this observe and this is an easy observation S alpha tilde m eta is equal to m times S alpha tilde eta. Okay. So, look at what I want to do I want to do this but I can to check this I can multiply by m and then check it and I can pass this m through. So, instead of doing for a given path I can do for a extend, expanded path and so I can replace eta by m eta okay. and so, so once I have replaced it by m eta. I clear I take m large so that all the denominators are cleared ok. So, what this path pi will now become is it will turn at integral weights it is straight line to an integral weight then a straight line to another integral weight then a straight line to another integral weight ok. In particular it is a concatenation of Lakshmi by Sheshadri paths ok and therefore, e Lakshmi Shadri paths have the property that the minimum is an integer ok and therefore, this concatenation will have that property ok. So, may assume um, so, may assume eta has minimal minimal integral you know I call it m i p ok ok this is the so in everything that f follows we will use this property. Um, so, before I make the claim let me say the following that this was what I finished with last time I think. So, if I look at uh, if um, pi, uh, pi uh, let us ok if pi 1 and pi 2 are paths such that h alpha h pi 1 alpha and m m min h pi 1 alpha and the minimum of pi 2 alpha are both integers then f alpha pi 1 pi 2 is equal to f alpha pi 1 pi 2 if something happens otherwise it is pi 1 f alpha pi 2 if something happens. So, it either goes into the first one or into the second one this is a very crucial this is fairly easy to see we had done this towards the end of the last lecture ok. So, I will change this to eta m now because I have eta m has the same property ok. Now, here is the final claim. So, from here final claim for m sufficiently large 
what this becomes is so s alpha s beta tilde s alpha tilde pi q rho this will become some path pi prime of so this is ls path of shape q rho star s alpha s beta s alpha tilde pi times something else Ah, eta to the m, sorry. I should take eta to the m. Okay, so I'll let me use some theta. Theta prime. And similarly, s beta tilde, s alpha tilde, s beta tilde. Remember, I, I want to show that these two are equal. And I am claiming a particular form for m sufficiently large. It looks like some Lakshmi Bhai Sheshadri path of this shape times this thing applied to eta, eta here, sorry, eta, and times something else. And similarly for this one, exactly the same form, except I have no control over these two. Okay. This is equal to, let's call it pi double prime. Again, this is Lakshmi Bhai Sheshadri of type of shape Q rho. Okay. And eta, okay, wedge theta. So you get this. This is the technical thing. Okay. So I wanted to show that these two are, I know that these three, these are equal because, because this lies completely in the dominant wild chamber. I can apply, I know the statement here. Yes. Repeat? Okay. So, the, my, my, I don't know that my property has minimal, um, yes, I don't know that, right? Uh, because I have, well, uh, uh, where was I? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. I made a slight um, Okay, I have the way I is okay. I should have started slightly differently. Okay, I am just taking the set of all set pi int, that is, all paths that end at integral weights. I am trying to de define W on this. Okay, see so, uh, the way I stated it, I, it felt like as if I am doing for B pi. Right? I am doing for B pi, that, where I know the integrality property, minimal integrality property. Right? I have proved it. Okay? So, you, you can assume, in that case, you can forget this step. Okay? You can forget the step. You, I know I, eta has minimal integrality property. So, for example, for, for see this step to say that from here to here, uh, this part, right? This part uses this very crucially, and that has this in the hypothesis. So, I want to be sure that my the the component parts when I concatenate them have minimal integrality property. Okay? So, for the case, the way I started today, B pi, I have it already. By the isomorphism theorem, we derived this as a corollary, remember. Right? Again, by expanding. But we already know that it has the minimal integrality property. So, it is okay. I can do this. Okay? There it is not required. But actually, it is more general on pi int. So, I do not know that my eta has integral, integral, minimal integrality property. Okay? But now, we are saying after expanding it, I can assume that it is uh, uh, Lakshmi Vaishya path and therefore has integral property. 
minimal integrality problem. Because they by see the where does it turn? The question is where it turns, right? It may turn at non-integral weights, but if I expand enough, it turns only at integral weights. Which means that it is a straight line path to an integral weight, concatenate with a straight line path to an integral weight, concatenate with another straight line path to an integral weight, etc. Correct? And straight line pass to an integral weight, we are in the case, we are in the finite dimensional case. So those are all obtained from the top, top, uh, uh, no, it's while conjugate in the dominant weight chamber, it is all gotten from there. Okay? And, th and therefore, it is a Lakshmi Vaisheshadri path. And therefore, it has minimal integrality. Is this clear now? Okay. So, so the point is, so, here is the thing that I am myself learning. That is, if your property scales, that is to show some property for a path, it is enough to show it after multiplying it m times. Then you can assume that it is a concatenation of straight line paths. Okay? And therefore, you can, if at least in the finite dimensional case, you can assume that the component paths have minimal integrality property. Not in B pi, not in B pi, because this could be a complicated. See, no, there's still difference. See, the, the diff uh, today I started with a path in B pi. That was, a, uh, that was an issue, you know, forget, uh, forget that. Suppose we started with pi in pi int, right? Suppose I, or eta in pi int, it is for this path that I want to do it, okay? Eta in pi int, I just want to check the bright relation. So there I can, I can do this and assume that it has my p, that's the point, okay? So there is no b pi at all. There is no pi, forget all reference to pi. Okay, now you have this picture and observe the following. See, I have no control over these, but these, I don't know what they are, but I, I know that they are Lakshmi Bhai Sheshadri of type Q rho. If you have this, then you conclude that this must be equal to this. Because actually then you show that this must be equal to this, that's conclusion, and this must be equal to this. because. This has the, see this, when I have something like this and I want to compare, okay, these two paths are equal. What does this mean? If I travel along some, some, for some time along this and travel along the same length along this and cut it up and after that, you know, they are the same, right? So here I cut it, see, I have, look at it, I have traveled some length on this and the same length on this, if I do that, it brings me to the begin end of this and the beginning of this, and at the same time I come at the, to the end of this and the beginning of this. Okay, and then I can look at this path. Right, and both of them have the same length, because I started with eta and applied f alpha, f beta, so both, I started with eta and then I have applied some f alphas, e alphas, etc. They are in the, uh, so that does not change the length, okay? So this finishes exactly when it, this finishes. So this starts when this starts and this finishes when this finishes. So you conclude that these two are equal, okay? So that's the proof, okay? So let me give you as homework the following exercise.
So, um, this is the one that will help you do this part. For m sufficiently large, you get this. Okay, here is the fix. So, excess homework exercise. This is a nice exercise to do, technical, but remember, we are we are being technical okay it's elementary though so fix theta eta phi parts uh, alpha simple okay parts uh, in pi int let's say Okay, with MIP. Let's assume minimal integrality property. Alpha simple, and you assume that pi one alpha check is bigger than zero. Sorry for the notation. The notation here eta, the place of eta may be played by pi. Okay. Assume this, then there exists m which is a function of alpha theta eta pi integer such that for all k bigger than or equal to 0 we have s alpha tilde theta so this alpha is this alpha pi k. So, like I said, the pi and the eta are switched. And this m is this m. Eta is equal to theta prime s alpha tilde pi to the k eta prime, where theta prime is equal to f alpha to the sum power of theta. Okay, And let me tell you what, in fact, so here is the hint to prove. In fact, this, uh, the m that you need here, so, m is good enough that you take this integer and it should be bigger than minus min of h eta alpha minus min of h theta alpha. So, let me just quickly tell you how this helps do it. Okay, this is one and two. So let's call this star. Prove star using one. So this is the claim. Prove the claim and then prove this using that. Okay. So let me tell you what what this let, let me tell you how to think about this or at least how i am thinking about it okay so so i am assuming pi 1 alpha check is bigger than 0 right so let's observe the one thing so what is pi 1 so this is h I am always drawing the graph of the h function of the path with respect to alpha, alpha fixed. Okay? So, it is positive, it ends up at positive. Okay? Now, let us look at this crucial middle part. 
right? What am I doing? I am taking m times this, right? m times this. So what, what is, okay, let's look at what is s alpha tilde of this. Remember, what, I, how do, what do I do? I have to apply f alpha so many times. What is the number of times? This is an integer, this distance. And I apply it so many times, right? And what will happen if, if, I, if I apply it so many times? I change not this part, but from here, right? Right, from here I change, if this is three or something and this is two, then I change from, I take a light band off with three and change this, right? So this gets changed. But let's look at what happens when I concatenate. If, just imagine the case when this is three and maybe let's make it a little higher. This distance is two and this distance is three. Just imagine that case. Okay. What is the band I choose? Three. Right. What is the distance between this and this is five. So when I concatenate, it again looks like this. It will now come down, it, it comes down two from here, which means this band of three has still space. So the observation here is, if I want to apply S alpha tilde to pi to the m, it is just S alpha tilde pi to the m. It's as easy as that, because this picture tells you that. Okay? Now, I have some arbitrary pass theta and pi. Right? I want to make this. So, what could theta, see theta could be a very bad path in the sense that it could take up all your, it could soak up, see what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to apply S alpha tilde. It could soak up all the F alphas or this could be a bad path. So let us look at the end. How can eta soak up all the F alphas? See, I want to apply S alpha tilde to this, right? So that I can, re I, I, this has to, on this it is S alpha tilde, right? But what can happen is, you see, if pi could be, so I, I have my, so let's say pi is like that, I take twice, let's just take theta is empty for this case. Now, pi could be a very path like that, correct? Pi could be a path like this. And what, ha what happens if you apply F alpha? You will never hit, you will never hit this, right? So what should I do? What am I allowed? I am allowed M is in my hands. So what I can do is, if I see, I, by applying these, uh, pi, multiplying, S, so what I am trying to do is shift it here. See, I have gotten better. And if I shift sufficiently high, this will not, then my F alpha has a chance of going here. Okay, so the idea is just very simple. So if you do this, it looks complicated, but it's a trivial, uh, technically easy thing to do, and from which you get this. Okay. So similarly, this I have explained why on this side for eta, and similarly, you have to make sure by taking m large enough that this theta doesn't soak up. For example, theta could be like this, in which case it will soak up lots of things. Okay? So again, you have to make sure that, you are, that whatever it soaks up, you have still sufficiently many things left so that it starts going here. Okay? That's the idea. Anyway, it's a good thing for you to try. Okay. So that finishes the Weil group action. So let me now come to the Weil character formula. So this is the path character formula.
so we have pi is in p plus and let us put pi 1 is equal to lambda or let pi be. Then, so here is the conclusion. Sigma, so I'll W in W, E W rho, sine W, E W rho times the character of B pi is equal to W in W sine of W E of W rho plus lambda. Rho as usual. Okay, it is okay. Here I maybe I have to be careful. It is a weight such which evaluates to or with uh, uh, which acting on any co root, simple co root gives me 1. Okay, there, may, there could be several such, you choose, you make a choice. Okay, it does not matter what you choose. Okay, and what is character of B pi? The definition recall is just you sum over all uh, eta in B pi. So, this is a set of paths, the exponential is all of eta 1. Okay. And as we observed last time for this to make sense, there must be finitely many paths, paths in this which end at a, any given point. Okay. This set itself could be infinite. Okay. For example, in this morning lecture you saw that, so that uh, the what was that v lambda naught the dimension was infinite. So, if I take all uh, if I take a straight line path for example, which ends at lambda naught right and look at b pi it will be infinite, but those at any given point that was finite if you were on the parabola it is 1 if you are below the parabola it is some partition of some number depending on how, how far below you are. So, that is a finite set. Okay? Now, that follows just from the definition because every thing is of the form pi the end point minus a, a non negative linear combination of the simple roots. Okay? So, every weight that occurs has to be of that every eta the weight that occurs meaning every end point has to be of that form and um, the only way you can get that is by applying the, the, F, the right number of f alphas in some order and there are only finitely many orders in which you can permute them. So, it is finite. Okay. So, this is what we want to prove. Okay. So, the the, re, uh, the reason why we did the while group action and the reason why it is done in the paper also I suppose is to assume is to immediately reduce to the case when you want. So, you, what we will do is you, you, we will formally check equate coefficients you have to verify certain coefficients. So, let us say um, So, proof let us equate coefficients of
right? Okay, now what I can do is I can apply an element of W on both sides. Okay. This nothing happens to this stays the same. Here it gets multiplied by a sine and here it gets multiplied by a sine. Okay? So, I can immediately reduce to the case when the mu is dominant. Right? So, may I assume by the while group action may assume mu is dominant. Is that clear? That is, if, if I am given some weight mu, instead of considering for mu, I will just apply, just choose a w such that, ah, maybe I have to be careful uh, in saying that uh, in that the mu's that occur are in my tits cone, etc. Okay, so uh, I assume that uh, any is that ah okay 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 already that uses something uh, maybe okay. So, it is not just because lambda minus uh, sum of positive, okay. right. Okay. So, okay, right. So, uh, um, yeah, that is a certain in the finite dimensional case, of course, you do not see this at all, there is no problem, but already here when I say mu is dominant, I am assuming that everything that occurs here is in the tits cone, that is, you can you can push it by an element of W to a dominant to the dominant chamber, right. And why is that? As uh, Vishwanath is pointing out here. So, here of course, there is no problem, okay, because they are pushed um, there. But here, right, here, this is an endpoint of a LS path. Yeah, uh, it is, I have chosen any path here, but the character. You know, it is enough to show that this in, in the case of, uh, I may assume that this is L s, right? Because, so this is equal to character of L s lambda, because of the uh, colored graph isomorphism, by colored graph isomorphism, colored directed graph isomorphism theorem. And an LS path by definition is uh, um, goes in um, W lambda directions, it goes only in W lambda directions and therefore, it is a convex linear combination of elements that are in W lambda and because the tits cone is uh, uh, convex and all the lambda and its while conjugates live there. So, the end point is also an element of the tits cone. Okay? So, you can push it by a while group to make it dominant. Okay? That is the proof, but maybe you should for a first pass you should just ignore this and think in the finite dimensional situation, you know ignore all this. <laughs> technicality and just think okay if mu is not not, not dominant say it's it's somewhere here if my, i'm in a3 case or sl3 case a2 if i'm here or here then i push it to the dominant oil chamber by using an element of w right and then what you have to observe is this these two are if i multiply by w these two uh, um, what is sorry? These two just get multiplied by the sign. 
see they are like this determinants in this uh, wild character formula that uh, Ravinder wrote down. It was some determinant by some Vandam, by the Van der Mont, right? That both those determinants, when you multiply by, a, you know, if I change my W, will sw switch by the sign of the W. Okay, so both of these change by the sign of W, and this changes. This doesn't change at all. Okay, so by doing for uh, W or uh, uh, a while conjugate of, um, sorry, but checking for mu or checking for a while conjugate of mu is the same. So I may assume that w, mu is dominant. Okay, so uh, let us now do for, um, uh, so let's do the easy case. So, so what is here, what is dominant? The only thing that is dominant, so on this side, so let's do, suppose mu is, so the case. So when, when will I get, if for a dominant mu, when, there is a, when is there a contribution on the right? Right, the only case, these are all, the only case when this is dominant is when W is identity, okay? So let's do the case when w is mu is equal to lambda plus rho and and so the contribution is one here i have to check that there is only one contribution here okay so w equal to so the, here the right hand side is equal to one meaning the coefficient, okay. So let me write coefficient of E mu in RHS equals one. Okay. So where will I get this? So I want to get lambda plus rho. What will I get here? W rho. What will I get here? Pi one minus lambda minus some positive root. So, for LHS, coefficient of any of uh, coefficients on the in RHS or um, so ter or terms in LHS are of the form what? e to the lambda minus some q plus, right, plus w rho. So, so let me write it as lambda rho plus or minus rho minus w rho. Okay. So, that is equal to e to the lambda plus rho minus some element of q plus minus rho minus w rho, which is also in q plus. Okay. So, how am I going to get lambda plus rho when all these contributions are 0? Right? And the only way that is true is when w is 1 and this this contribution is also 0, which means I, I must end up at lambda, which means there is the unique path. Okay. So, um, so, what it shows is terms, so coefficient of, what we have checked is coefficient of e to the lambda plus rho in the LHS is also 1. Okay. So, e to the, if I look at, I repeat, we are reduced to checking only for e to the mu where mu is dominant and the only dominant thing on the right side is lambda plus rho and for that both the sides check. Okay. 
Now, suppose mu is dominant and not equal to lambda plus rho. So, case mu dominant and mu not equal to lambda plus rho. So, what is the what is the RHS coefficient of E mu in RHS is how much? The only dominant thing here is lambda plus rho. Everything else is non-dominant. So I assume mu is dominant. So it is zero. Okay. So what do I have to show? I have to show the contribution here is zero. Okay. So set sigma mu so where so now i'll i'll try to look at the contribution from this side okay how will i get it i must so this thing plus an end point must add up to rho uh, sorry add up to mu correct the end point here eta 1 and this w thing should be add up to mu okay so i define this set is equal to um, eta comma sigma. So this is in B pi cross while group such that eta one plus sigma rho is equal to. Right. So whenever I, whenever there is such a combination, I pick up a coefficient of it. It it, is, it makes a contribution, and what do I have to show? So let's write out what we really have to show. I have to show that what is the so if I have such a term, if I have such a contribution, what is the what is the actual contribution it makes? It is sine of sigma, right? Okay. So what we have to show is if I add over eta sigma in sigma pi, okay, sine of sigma, this is what we want to show. So this, this side is 0. So I have to show this side is 0. OK? That's, that's. This is OK? OK. So it's, a, it's some plus ones and minus ones. And you have to show that they cancel out. So in particular, there is an even number of them. OK? There's as many ones as minus ones. So there is evenly many contributions. Half of them are one, half of them are minus one, and they cancel. That's the only way it can be. Okay. okay. So now there is a standard way of doing, or at least one standard, when very, very standard and beautiful way of proving such things. Right. Okay. By the way, so here is an exercise homework. It is similar to the what we considered here. Homework is show this is a finite set so that this makes sense okay this involves the just the kind of calculation that i wrote there you uh, you know you have to lambda minus mu or um, you have to write something you have to um, the difference in q q plus two things are in Q plus and their sum is something, so both of them both of them are bounded. Okay. Anyway, this is a good homework to uh, be doing. Okay. So it's a finite set, so it makes sense. So what we do is, and the standard technique is the following: you introduce an involution on the set, okay, and such that. Um, The involution maps switches the sign. 
okay switches the sign that is the standard technique so want to introduce an involution on the set such that sign such that if eta sigma goes to eta prime sigma prime under the involution then sin of sigma is equal to sin of sigma ah okay so just let's keep the definition okay now here is the So let us fix so let us now investigate so I have to find this you know try to find this such an involution right. So what am I going to do I am just going to try and see the natural thing because this is a while group element right what do you expect to see what switches the sign just multiplication by an S alpha. Okay, so given a certain eta and sigma, I have to find a certain um, alpha, pick a certain alpha, right, and say that okay. So I, I replace eta by something eta prime, which involves alpha, maybe e alpha to some power of eta or f alpha to some power of eta, right, and sigma by s alpha sigma. This is the this is what we want to do, right? That's the right. Okay. So the, the, the it's a bit involved, uh, but this is not nearly as involved as the previous one. This is it's so um, it's a pleasant thing. So we'll we'll try to do that. So uh, actually, if you formally write it down, there is you have to break this set up into several sets on each of which you give an involution. Okay, that's the way it will finally formally work. But in order to understand, let us just investigate what happens to a eta, right? Okay. So, um, what do I know about eta? So here is here is how he. Um, so fix. So this is just a you know informal. Let's say. I choose this here, right? And what does this mean? This means uh, this thing. The end point when I shift, shift by sigma rho, it gives me mu which is dominant, right? Okay. So let us draw this picture. So this is eta shifted by sigma rho. So let me write sigma rho in the beginning, eta. This is the picture I am drawing. Okay. So the path is shifted by sigma rho. So it starts at sigma rho and comes and comes into mu. Mu is dominant. Ends at mu. So this is this is a picture of the path somewhere. It ends at so maybe it starts sigma rho. It starts at sigma rho and comes and ends up at okay okay so what he says is now this is seems tricky but maybe after you've done a few examples it's easy to guess this and once you guess it it's easy to work with so here is the crucial thing let t naught be maximal in 0 1 such that this thing eta 1 plus sigma rho is sorry eta t naught 
eta t naught plus sigma rho is dominant but not regular. Okay. Let us wonder why such a thing should exist. See, if I start with sigma rho, this is in the non-dominant chamber. Mu ends up in the dominant chamber. So surely I must pass a point, I must cross a wall. Okay? So the, so it surely is going to this is going to exist. Okay? Suppose it does not exist, what does it mean? It means sigma rho was too dominant to begin with which means sigma was identity. Okay? So, um, if sigma was identity, uh, except if sigma rho is dominant, I could lie entirely in the dominant well chamber without it being, so look at, but not regular. If, suppose, such a T naught does not exist, Then, in fact, then you can say, okay, that <coughs> eta lies entirely in the dominant white chamber. Right, because sigma must be identity and eta naught plus rho, eta t plus rho is dominant, uh, sorry, is dominant and regular, is dominant and regular for all t, which means that eta is regular, is lies in that. So, so mu is equal to lambda plus rho and but this is contradiction because we have assumed mu is not uh, mu is not lambda plus uh, so somewhere we did it no i it's already erased so mu so this is mu not so mu not equal to so this is in the case mu is not equal to lambda so, okay i hope this is clear so, uh, Shavik, maybe you should ask your question again. Is this clear now? No, I see, see, if uh, here is, let me repeat it and see, let's see if this answers your question. If sigma is not identity, sigma rho is definitely not in the well chamber, dominant well chamber. It's in some other well chamber. Okay? This rho, remember, is a regular weight and in the dominant well chamber. So when I act W to this, it will go into the, it acts simply transitively. So it goes, each one is in some, some different well chamber, okay? So, so you can use these values to index sigma itself. Sigma is determined by sigma rho, okay? Because the stabilizer of rho is identity, okay? So, so if I start with a non-dominant well chamber and go and mu is dominant, end up at dominant, surely this is okay, no problem. Yeah, yeah, to travel from a uh, non-dominant chamber to the dominant chamber, I must cross a wall. Yeah, That's all I'm using. Okay, however, whatever topology you use to say this is fine. Okay, now 
the, if it doesn't exist in particular, it means that you, you must have started at rho, right? Rho and ended up at mu and never being, so in which case you, you were always dominant. See, you see if, you, if, you, if at any time you become non-dominant, then because you have to go back to the dominant chamber, you have to, you, this property will hold, okay? So you started at rho and you stayed dominant, dominant and regular all the time. So if some weight is dominant and regular, if you subtract rho from it, it is going to be dominant. So since after, I add, after adding rho, I stayed regular dominant, the original thing must have been dominant. Eta lies entirely in the dominant way. That's not possible. Okay. Now let's come to the crucial. Uh, eta has. Yes, it's an. Yes, yes, yes. Eta has MYP. Because you can, we can even assume it's LS. So what you do is, contradiction, so you can, such a tree not exists, okay? Now, I put the following, okay? So, uh, so given any such path, such a tree not exists, right? I take the maximal one, right? Now, I, if you want, I can put an equivalence relation between two paths, saying that, I will say some other path. So I will say eta prime, sigma prime equivalent to, I introduce a relation, is related to this if they coincide, if, okay, what is that? Eta T naught plus rho P, sigma P, sigma rho. And eta prime t naught plus sigma prime rho coincide after t naught. Eta t, I meant, I want theta t. So, yeah, sorry. Thank you. I think this is what I want. Let's see. Okay. Now this is an equivalence relation. Just observe. So of course the path is equivalent to itself. If why is it reflexive or uh, whatever symmetric, symmetric, right? So why is so if if these coincide, then it means that the t naught value is the same for the other guy. So to say, so you understand, so for, I have to look at the T naught value of, of eta prime, but if it is equivalent to this, this, the T naught value is the same and therefore it is reflexive and also it is transitive, okay? So the T, if, if they are related, then the T naught values are identical. That's the thing to observe, okay? Therefore, these are, this, this is an equivalence relation, okay? Now, what I do is, so, uh, involution is introduced on each equivalence class. Under the above relation. equivalence class of this set. So I break this set sigma mu, which is a finite set, into different equivalence classes depending on the T naught values. Okay, and each one of them I introduce. And what do I what is the thing that what is the alpha? Right? We said that there must be a simple root alpha. 
and this sigma value must change by s alpha sigma that is the most natural thing that is what we expect and the eta value must be must changed by some f alpha right okay. What is the alpha value do you think what is the natural thing it is a dominant weight but not regular it is on some wall. Uh, so, it lies on some hyperplane H alpha, right? Maybe there are several alphas of that kind. You choose some alpha, okay? I fix one alpha for the entire equivalence class, okay? So, fix, so fix alpha such that this thing eta t naught plus sigma rho belongs to the hyperplane perpendicular to alpha that on which alpha check evaluates to 0 that is what it means. Okay. Okay. What, what do I do with the, so here is the, so I know that sigma rho is not dominant right I mean sigma, sigma is not identity. Okay. So, sigma rho I look at alpha check. This is some negative integer, right? So, I put this equal to m. Same alpha. It is the same alpha. So now, I fixed alpha. Now, I fixed alpha. Okay. So, I have fixed a particular equivalence class of this containing this eta sigma, right? And I am now defining the involution. Okay. So, the claim is eta sigma going to okay f alpha m eta s alpha sigma ah, ah okay 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 one second one second sorry sorry Sorry, I made a, I made, I jumped the gun. So, this, okay, here is, okay, there is no need for sigma, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, there, there is no, I mean, I, I, sorry, I just said it is a negative integer, sorry, sorry about that, it is an integer, okay, it is an integer. So, if it is, so, if uh, m is uh, less than or equal to 0 and E alpha m eta so, m is less than 0, if m is bigger than 0, okay, that is the claim. Okay. So, if I do this, then this defines an involution. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so th this is the operation, the claim. Okay. Okay. Let us let us see why maybe. Um,
well let us leave that as a partly as a homework and partly as a homework that i will if either we'll do it in the tutorial or we will work it out next time first thing okay so this defines this involution and so you're done that's the end of the proof okay so we've reduced this to this uh, situation so what i'll do next time either we do it in the tutorial or i'll recall the technical conditions what the only the technical part i will draw this picture again right and we have to check that this is an involution make sure um, the sign you see that shifts but i have to make sure that this this object lives also in uh, in this or in the same equivalence class etc okay okay so that we will do since we are out of time i don't want to push it so we'll we'll do it next time